paid tribute to Sir James Crothers. Here's a man I haven't seen for a long, long time. My former boss at uh, TVW Channel 7, Sir James Crothers, a man who is synonymous, of course, with the television industry, not only in WA, but right throughout Australia. Sir James, good to see you again. Very good. Very good to be here. Well, a fabulous journey for you from the newspaper industry to the television industry. But I wonder if I can take you back to October 16, 1959, what were your instructions then from the late James McCartney? He asked me to go to Melbourne uh, because the first television station in Australia had started then in Melbourne and he uh, said they were, he knew they were calling for licence applications for WA and would I go over and have a look and see what I thought. So I went over and came back and uh, um, told him that uh, you know, it looked pretty good that we could make a reasonable application, but an awful lot of work involved because no one, there wasn't a person in Western Australia who'd even seen television apart from me and an occasional traveller. So uh, we started really from scratch. It was an amazing time, wasn't it? Because, I mean, I know we have many innovations in television today with colour and picture and, and uh, new technology, but I don't think anybody can really, amongst the newer crop of uh, youngsters today, just how exciting it was in those days. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, well, you know, something that's as new as that was for us here is always exciting, and uh, it was a wonderful time. And, and also, you didn't have much guidance because no one knew where to guide you. So you were on your own and you, uh, you made your own way and did the best you could for yourself. You were pioneers, really, in that respect. You and the late Brian Treasure, uh, Darcy Farrell, mm -hmm. uh, Frank Moss. I mean, people that... that and Coralie. Uh, and Coralie Condon, mm -hmm. of course, from a live point of view. Mm -hmm. Gene Hunsley, I recall, and, yes. uh, and uh, many others who really got, really got the station going, but it was such a mammoth task, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, and they all worked very well together, but, um, you know, from the very time that... Um, James McCartney saw me and asked me to go and uh, see whether it was worthwhile applying for a licence. And uh, I came back and reported and he said, OK, apply for a licence. So I applied for a licence and we got it and I came to see him again and he said, uh, OK, we got the licence. Now start a station, please in one year from today, and it was the 13th was the date, uh, and so off we went and planning to start the station a year later on the 13th of, I think it was April, it's not, I can't remember. And um, uh, one of the directors, obviously very superstitious, wasn't happy about that, and so he made it change it to the 16th. The 16th of October, <laughs> yeah, and what a famous date it's turned out to be from 1959. You know, Channel 7 created, I think, not only the first television station, but they involved the public because we had so many big events. Uh, we became part of the people, and the people mm. became part of the mm. station. Well, that was the instruction from uh, McCartney to me. He said, uh, we want the station to belong to the people. That was my instruction, go and make it a station that belongs to the people. And that's what we tried to do. And that came by way of, of public events, public involvement. There were many of them, but perhaps the, uh, the outstanding uh, association with the public has been Telethon, which commenced in 1968. And Fat Cat. Here is Fat Cat. That cap was an invention uh, uh, in later years I felt a bit sorry about because he was such a great character that we could have made him international, I reckon. 
but I, d I didn't ever get around to doing it. Great pity because of great character. Those days we had so much live television too. There was Children's Channel 7, there was nighttime variety, there were teenage shows, there was something happening just about every day yeah. of the week and it was a hive of activity, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh yes, yes, there was n never any shortage of things to do. <laughs> and some great names uh, were either developed or passed through Channel 7. I mean, we, we speak of people like Rolf Harris who stayed with us for a year or so. Yes. Well, he came back to work for us, of course, from England. We brought him back and he was, he was very good indeed. Great worker and did a great deal for the start of the station. I didn't uh, start there until uh, May of 1961, but it was still part of the early crop. But ahead of me were people like Lloyd Lawson, David Farr, Jeff Walker, Vin Walsh doing the weather. And then a bit later on, there were the two Garys, myself and Gary Meadows. Yes. Yeah. What and happened to Gary Meadows? Unfortunately Delayed. passed away, yeah, in 1983, far too, far too early. Somewhere in the eastern states, wasn't it? But the, the comparison today is, OK, we have much more technology, etc., but television has changed in that from a station that produced so much live television, uh, not too much these days because it's a network situation with the networks, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, it's so expensive to make things that stand up to the international competition and competition from the other parts of Australia. Uh, yes, it's a, it's a, it's a real, really uh, concentrated business now. We touched on Telethon just a while ago and uh, I can recall that uh, you and uh, Brian Treasure sent me to Adelaide in 1967 and I, Channel 9 in Adelaide were, had the most successful telethon at that stage in the country. And again, it was a bit like opening a television station. We really didn't know how telethon worked, but by golly, it's worked ever since, hasn't oh, it? Yes. yes, telethon is uh, really, it's a part of the state now, isn't it? It's part yeah. of the community uh, and the people who worked on it, made it that way, it's, it'll last forever. And it's now one of the world's finest. Uh, it gets confirmation of this from all over the world, from the many visitors yes. we have. Um, originated really, uh, a, a telethon of that type was run in, I think in Chicago or some such, and I heard about it, um, and I didn't go and see it because, you know, you didn't travel around right. like a all over the place then, but we, it was, that's where we first thought that we'd start. If there were new innovations, if there were things to do first, it was generally Channel 7 that did it and led the way. And that's held the station in good stead, hasn't mm -hmm. it? Because it's, it's been one of the most dominant television stations in the country, without doubt, and mm -hmm. still is today. Yeah, I think so. Um, and that all came from the boss, James Edward McCartney, who, you know, he said, get in there and do something. Don't just sit there, do something. <laughs> what, looking back, and I know it's probably a difficult question for you because we've spoken about uh, telethon, uh, the Christmas pageant, of course, was another innovation that, uh, again, associated with the public. But what are some of your maybe proudest memories or fondest memories of television? It would Channel 7 in particular. Oh, I don't know that there are any particular things. I think Telethon uh, really is, it, it'll last forever, it'll go on forever, and it'll make lots of money for charitable organisations for a long time to come. I think, I think Telethon itself is um, really the greatest achievement. It's been total involvement, hasn't it, from, uh, from the public and from the station and from, well, parents identify with it, of course, because it's mm. all about children and, and uh, their health and, and research. Mm. Well, uh, it's been great talking to you once again, Sir James. I, I, I'd just like to comment one thing myself, having started there when I was only youngster, I was mm. 19, I think, yes. when I first joined out there, that you became, you didn't have a job, you became part 
of a family. Yes. And it was a family, and we were sort of protected, and, and because it was, and we, we all learned together, I guess. Yes, it wasn't kind of uh, work, you do this, you do that, you do something else. Everybody kind of mixed in together and did things, didn't they? And they were they? glad to do it, and yes. they were enthusiastic, weren't they? Yes. And, uh, you know, to have help of people like Rolf Harris when he came over and gave us a real kick along. <laughs> what a character. Well, you had the magic touch too because you had key people. Uh, I refer, I've mentioned Brian Treasure, mm. uh, Frank Moss, Darcy Farrell, uh, one of the top newsmen of the day. Absolutely. Still. Mm. Still, that's <laughs> Still, true. Still, he's... Uh, yeah. He made our news. Darcy's a, the best news newsman I've seen around for a long time. Very good indeed. And so, so we had we had people who really became specialists. And people fostered their careers there and went on to even bigger things themselves. They refer to uh, Bill McKenzie, uh, Greg Byrne. I mean, uh, there were so many of them, weren't there? Yes, we produced some good ones. Yep. <laughs> Sir James, uh, compliments to you and congratulations. 50 years of, of a dynasty, really, at Channel 7, which is just as strong, if not stronger today than it ever was. But you were the pioneers. You were the people that got it going. Yes. Yes. And uh, it all gets back to the um, man I mentioned before, James Edward McCartney. He just said, go and start a television station. Thank you. That, uh, that uh, was my complete instruction. That was your brief. Well, compliments to you because it worked out to a T. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for joining us okay. today. Okay, thanks very much.